Welcome back, casual gardeners. Hey. Saving seeds is a really great way to improve your self-sufficiency or even to experiment with your own lineages of garden plants. Today I'm going to talk about how to save just a few of the seeds that are great for, for saving in the fall. There are a lot more. I've also mentioned in a previous video that there is a little bit of a bad feeling between myself and Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. That is actually why I'm collecting a lot of these seeds today. If you're interested in that, I am going to talk about it a little bit more at the end of the video. So tomatoes are really easy to harvest seeds from because we pick them mature. I'm making a distinction between mature and ripe because ripe means ready for us to eat it and mature means the seeds are fully cooked and ready to be planted later on. And it's an important distinction because not all of the vegetables we harvest in our gardens are mature when we harvest the vegetables. So theoretically, all you need to do to take, collect seeds from your tomato is to scoop them out of the tomato and dry them for a couple of days until they're completely dry, then store them for three to five years. That's it. Most seed sellers do a different method though. A seed seller isn't interested in selling crusty, goopy seeds. So to get the goop off, to get the tomato pulp away from the seeds, what they'll do is they will ferment the seeds in a small amount of water for a couple of days. If you ferment your seeds too long, you will get them to sprout and it is way too early to grow them next year. Don't do that. So a couple of days of fermentation is all you need. After that, you can rinse them off, lay them out on a paper towel or something to dry, and then you will have non-crusty seeds to save. They work just as well. There are people who will tell you if you do not ferment your seeds, they will not germinate because there is a hormone present in the tomato fruit itself that prevents germination. They are half right. There is such a hormone. It is inactivated by fermentation, but it is also inactivated just by prolonged contact with the air. So drying your seeds is enough to ensure they'll sprout next year. Fermenting them is just to clean them up. Oh, hello, ladybug. Peppers are a little bit trickier to save seeds from because we mostly don't harvest mature peppers. We harvest ripe peppers. A great example would be this jalapeno. This jalapeno is ripe. It is ready for me to eat it, but it is not mature. Other examples of peppers we harvest immature are serranos and poblanos and green bell peppers. There is actually a very long list of peppers we harvest immature. So if you're going to save seeds from them, you're going to want to wait for the fruit to mature before you pick it. Jalapenos, serranos, poblanos, and bell peppers are all examples of peppers that will turn red as they mature. So I would need to wait for my jalapenos to turn red, assuming I have enough time for them to turn red before my first frost, if I'm going to collect seed from them. Not all peppers ripen to red. Some will mature to yellow or orange. So either you're going to need to do research for your individual peppers if they're not on my list, or you can just don't pick a pepper. Just leave a pepper on the plant until it has matured. You know a pepper is mature because it'll get a little squishy. What color is it when it's squishy? That is its mature color. Peppers are a lot easier to clean the seeds from. They don't come out very pulpy. You can just scoop them out, dry them for a couple days. Peppers will store again for three to five years in ideal conditions. So keep them cool, keep them dark, keep them dry. Cucumbers and zucchinis are another example of vegetables that we pick before they are mature. I know if I wait too long, my wife will complain that it has gotten too seedy that's actually our evidence that it, it has matured some. It, you can tell there are things you can look for if you really, really want to collect seeds from your cucumber or zucchini. I don't do it. And the reason I don't do it is that allowing one of these to mature on the vine will slow down production of the other fruits. These are technically a fruit. So I'm gonna call them fruits because I'm a biologist. So if you really, really want to do it, um, hopefully you have a longer season so that you can get through your productive part of your harvest and then allow it to go to seed. Otherwise, you are going to lose some productivity from your plants. If you're looking for a ripe zucchini,
And this is the size I like to pick them. It's a little bit smaller than at the grocery store because they're extra tender. But this is not a mature zucchini. If this were a mature zucchini, it would be up to three or four feet long. And its skin, instead of being soft, would be hard like a winter squashes. Zucchinis are closely related to acorn squash. We just eat them immature. So just like an acorn squash, they, they'll get a harder skin when it's time to pick them, if you want them for seeds. Cucumbers don't get as big when they're fully mature. Uh, their trick that you want to look for is that they will actually turn yellow or orange when it's time to pick your cucumber for seeds. Winter squash are another crop that we harvest mature. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to show you that in this video because I don't have any winter squash that are ready yet. What I'm growing here are butternut squash, and just by a stroke of luck, I can save seeds from these. If you want to collect squash seeds to reuse, you're in a bit of a pickle because you need to space your squash like 800 feet apart to prevent cross-pollination, and cross-pollination can be rampant. So for example, zucchinis and patty pans and yellow crooknecks and acorn squash, I'm going to put the whole list right here. Boom. So those things are all going to hybridize with one another and give you weird squash if you don't separate them like 800 feet. But lucky for me, these butternuts will not hybridize with the zucchinis or cucumbers or watermelons. There are some people who say that watermelons will hybridize with your squash and you can't grow them together. That is false. They are separated enough in terms of what species they are. That, that just doesn't work. Nasturtiums are really easy to save seeds from. This perennial garden favorite is a fantastic self-seeder. It's really easy to find the seeds if you look for them. This is going to be my first year saving nasturtium seeds, which means that is my first year I've even noticed that they're there. The flowers are just so showy. We do not see the seeds. Their seeds are massive. So here's here's a seed head that I just picked that if I had allowed it to mature I would have gotten at least two seeds out of. You can wait for them to um, start to dry out or if it's easy to if you can touch it and it falls off easily that's how you know it's ready to collect it. These seeds are good for three to five years so you don't have to replant them wide, right away and if you bought some nasturtium seeds this year from a seed seller and you didn't get to plant them all, you can still reuse them next year. The immature seeds can be pickled and eaten kind of like capers, I understand. I've never tried it. So if you're interested in that, you'll need to figure out how to do it somewhere else. I'm going to end with marigolds. Marigolds are another classic gardening favorite flower that folks just like to put in with their plants. Whatever you believe about marigolds and what they do with various pests, I'm not going to try to disabuse you of that right now. A lot of it is garbage. We're interested in the seeds. So here is a flower head that has died back. And here are the seeds. These are going to be good for about one or two years. So you're going to want to use them right away. But it's super easy to collect marigold seeds. These are already dry. I'm going to throw them in a paper envelope until next year. If you hear that humming sound in the background, that just means my greenhouse fan has come on. We have come to the end of the list of seeds I want to talk about collecting today. This is by no means the end of the list of seeds you can collect. There are a ton of seeds that are pretty easy to collect that you can use year after year and never have to buy seeds again theoretically especially if you are buying from a place like Baker Creek that specializes in heirloom seeds those are open pollinated seeds that are just about endlessly reusable so they're a great source for seeds if you want to collect seeds that have grown in your own garden that's as good a segue as I'm gonna get to um, talking about why I'm not buying seeds from Baker Creek heirloom seeds anymore. So the story of my beef with Baker Creek begins and ends with the genetically modified purple tomato. 
Now, I did actually yesterday find an article written by an anti-GMO pro Baker Creek source that talked about how Norfolk healthy produce is a liar and you can get high anthocyanide tomatoes without doing GMO technology. They're not wrong, but they're also not right. The tomatoes they had in mind have deep purple skins, but the flesh is still red. So the Norfolk Healthy Produce genetically modified tomato is purple in a way that's far more than skin deep. It has a deep purple skin. This one's not fully ripe. It's more chocolatey looking. It gets purple and the purple goes all the way through the flesh and extends into the juice. These tomatoes get so purple, they turn other foods in contact with them purple. So it's a whole different magnitude of purple. This year is the very first year, 2024, that Norfolk Healthy Produce has made their genetically modified purple tomatoes available to private gardeners. And the best part is you can legally save these seeds. So that's why I'm saving so many is because I'm gonna share them for free with my friends. I can't sell the seeds, but I can give them away all I like uh, based on their patent because they want to encourage us to share the seeds and they want to encourage us to produce hybrid tomato varieties that include their gene. Because the whole point of the purple tomato is not just to make them some money and um, provide a healthier tomato. The point of the purple tomato is to maybe counteract some of the public fear around GMO foods. The 2024 seed catalog for Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds featured a tomato variety called the Purple Galaxy Tomato. And the Purple Galaxy Tomato was unique in that it had not just a deep purple skin, but purple that ran all the way through the flesh. It's a beautiful tomato and it made for an incredible looking cover photo for their seed catalog. Norfolk Healthy Food got a hold of the seed catalog and said, hold on, there's no way to get this amount of purple in a tomato using conventional breeding. We were unable to do it, we were trying. Oregon State University produced a couple of very purple tomatoes, but that purple is only skin deep. We suspect that the tomato you're featuring on the cover of your seed catalog is one of our GMOs. It looks just like our stuff. We want you to test this tomato. And in response, Baker Creek said, no, 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 no. We don't sell GMOs. We are super anti-GMO. It's true. And that's not actually why I'm mad at them. A seed producer and seed seller is perfectly welcome to have whatever personal philosophy about GMOs they want. And they'll still buy their stuff. But they're like, no, 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 no. None of our suppliers would ever offer us a GMO seed, they know better. And also we had this tested for known um, traces of GMO and they're, they're just not in there. Norfolk Healthy Produce came back and said, we will test this for you. We will test for specifically the gene sequence that we took out of the Snapdragons to give it this deep purple color all the way through. It's easy to find if you're looking specifically for that and not for known traces of GMO. That's a load of hooey. So Norfolk Healthy Food tested the tomato and said, yeah, this is ours. You, somebody sent you this tomato and they're like, no, no, we got our seeds from Europe and they're illegal in Europe. And I'm not doubting that they got their seeds in Europe. And I know they're illegal in Europe. And that's still not why I'm mad at them. Baker Creek, as they should have, pulled that seed catalog. They're don't, not offering that seed catalog anymore. They're not offering the seeds anymore because they don't sell GMO seeds and that's fine. Then they came out with the, with the release on their own website that said, you know, they, they have similarities to the purple GMO tomato, but our tests were inconclusive. And that makes me a little bit hesitant to trust this um, company anymore because they don't have inconclusive tests. Norfolk Healthy Food, the people who use this sequence specifically and can test for it, helped them test it and find it. It's not inconclusive. They were about to sell a GMO. Don't freaking lie, Baker Creek. We're still not in unforgivable territory though. 
what made me get to a point where I cannot forgive them and I no longer feel good buying anything from Baker Creek is that then, it was out of nowhere, they, they went on this like weird screed against farmers. Like they're just putting them down and, and saying some absolutely unwarranted stuff. And I share with Baker Creek and probably most of you a frustration with how commercial farming happens now. But there are still family farmers out there who are trying to grow produce the way their relatives hundreds of years back grew produce. And even many factory farmers, year after year, so that we can go to the grocery store when grasshoppers have eaten all our stuff. Even most of the industrial farmers are taking a gamble with their lives and livelihood year after year so that when our crops fail, we don't starve. These people, I don't care if they drive a giant combine or a cute little tractor, they are all, in my opinion, heroes, and we rely on them to have affordable food in the United States when our gardens go <laughs> And ain't nobody gonna come after my farmers and expect to continue to receive my money. I did go looking for um, an example of this thing I read with my own eyeballs, and it's gone now. Uh, Baker Creek has done a really good job um, editing their history on the internet because I think they realized that they were kind of stupid. They did offer a lot of varieties of vegetables that I love and I'm going to continue to grow. And that's why I'm saving seeds this year so that I don't have to rely on them to get my sweet, sweet veg. I just want to close by saying, if you are not personally mad at Baker Creek, I am not mad enough to try to persuade you to get mad. I can't offer you the evidence I saw because it has been deleted. If I haven't persuaded you to stop buying their stuff, good. Keep buying Baker Creek's seeds because they are mostly a good company. They have always offered me a good product. So keep on buying them if you like their stuff. If you don't like their stuff, what is wrong with you? Regardless of whether or not you like their stuff, like my video, subscribe to my channel. The next video that comes out is going to be about, uh, actually, I'm going to make some sourdough bread. You're going to come into my kitchen, I'm going to cook some bread, and I'm going to show you why all those channels that specialize in sourdough bread and make it look way too complicated, they're doing you a disservice because it's super simple. And I'll show you how I do it. Thank you for joining me here in my garden today and listening to my rant, me rant a little bit, I feel a little bit of catharsis, and I hope you do too. And I hope you have a wonderful time in your own garden.